Good morning. Good morning, Park Church, to everyone that is here with us this morning and all of you who are present online. Um, what a glorious morning it is, too. You know, <clears throat> for the last week, and especially yesterday, as a nation, it just feels like we've kind of pulled together as we, we remember 9-11 and at this 20th year anniversary of those who uh, we lost, whether it was on the actual day or in the events that followed, all the way up to the Marines who, the, who we lost in the last uh, few weeks. So, you know, I just ask you for one more day to lift all of those survivors and those who lost loved ones and the whole nation up in prayer. This is a time for us to come together and be courageous and be unified. I think we've spent so much time on division lately that it's time for us to take this moment and come back together as one nation under God. So from there, I welcome you again, whether you're online or here with us in service. Let's praise our Almighty Father, and let's start with a few announcements that we have coming up here in the church. First of all, we have a new ladies group, and it was going to start last Wednesday the 8th, but now it looks like we're going to start on September 15th, and that might get posted again, so watch you know, Facebook and watch um, your emails if we have to delay it. We delayed it a week because of COVID, um, Pastor Noel and Pastor Mike are both recovering. Pastor Mike has uh, tested negative. Hallelujah. We're so thankful for that. Um, but they are still recovering from this very, very difficult illness, as you know. And then, you know, we have other members who were going to be part of Ladies' Night who also had COVID in their household and needed to quarantine. So, you know, sometimes we got to just put life on hold. But the good thing is, God is still there for each and every one of us, even if we can't maybe come together in fellowship in person in those time frames. So God is so good. Coming up on October 18th, we are going to have a church picnic. So mark your calendars for October 18th. Church picnic, it'll be on a Sunday. And also what I believe is going to happen that weekend, if you are a camper, somebody who likes to go out in your trailer or a tent, we are going to have a park church camping weekend. And we're going to do it that same weekend here at the church in the church parking lot, which means we're going to get to have a fire in that wonderful fire pit we have. And we'll be outdoors so we don't have to really worry about COVID as much. We can kind of social distance around the fire pit but have a great time, and that will be also the weekend that Tabitha's is going to be going on. So those who come to camp, if you want to serve, you've got an opportunity to serve. So keep those events in your little queue here of your brain. They're going to be coming up in October. Yes? Um, we may need to fix that slide. <coughs> ah. So what is the correct date then? The 17th. Well, then I can correct the slides, and I'll make sure it's correct for next week. No, no, it's, I'm glad you brought that up. So let's go backwards. October 17th or 19th? 17th, Sunday, October 17th. Whatever Sunday that is in October, let's just put it that way. All right. Additionally, we have our men's group. Every Tuesday, they've been praying for Mike, still meeting. So, hey, guys, come on out. Have a great time just to fellowship with the guys. And I actually have a new picture to add to that slide because the guys wanted a new picture. So watch out for next week. We're going to have a new picture. So with that in mind, does anybody have any prayer requests? Okay, Elizabeth's family and your aunts and your husband. Yep. And especially prayers for you, Elizabeth, as you go through this difficult time of no rest as you take care of the whole world because you are such a good steward of others. So, so we, our prayers will be definitely for you. And we have prayers of thanks that Susanna is back with us and feeling great. So that's awesome, Sharon.
Okay, so a co-worker's family ha member having um, surgery for cancer, and then another co-worker ha who has a family member who probably won't be able to live by themselves. Uh, so prayers of healing for all of them and prayers of strength for those who are supporting them. All right, anybody else? Okay, Todd's neighbor, 30 days with COVID. So prayers for his healing. Um, and uh, um, that's rough. That's a long time to be in ICU. Um, any other prayer requests? I have a praise, and that is for each and every one of you. As I look at our church family, I thank God that I found a place I could get plugged in, which s such loving caring people that I consider to truly be my own family members. And then my other praise is for my brother who actually flew out from Montana and has been visiting with me this weekend. It's been awesome. So let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, we just come to you today with hearts of sadness hearts of joy, and hearts looking for your strength. Lord, 20 years ago, a tragic event hit our nation. We lift up those families who lost loved ones, whether it was during that day, in the following war that ensued, or even in the recent years as a result of all of our this war on terrorism. But, Lord, we ask you to come into our nation and lift us up and help us to become united again as one family, one country, one nation under God, just as you intended us to be. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to remember and for that opportunity to realize that it's through your son, Jesus Christ, that we can endure these hardships and yet grow stronger and be courageous through you. Lord, we have a number of prayer requests that have been lifted up today from those dealing with cancer surgery to immobility and needing home care to loved ones in ICU and loved ones who have COVID across the country to the pressures of taking care of everybody else at the risk of our own rest. We ask you, Lord, to bring comfort to those who lift up these prayers and healing to those we are praying, praying for. We ask you, Lord, to just fill our hearts with joy and blessings as we come together today to praise you and to worship you and to hear your message. May we open our hearts, our minds, and our souls to you and truly let you into our lives so that you are in control, not us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, Cindy, we are so blessed that you are going to be um, giving the message today, and we thank you for stepping in for, for uh, Mike this morning. Absolutely. And for those online, Cindy shared that it's just a blessing to see that text come in from Mike. So, Mike, if you're listening at home, Cindy finds it a blessing every time you ask her to come on <laughs> over and pray, uh, lead the message for our family. And we are just blessed to have you, Cindy. So thank you so much. So let us stand and rejoice as we sing, Jesus is all the world to me. And I think I caught poor Elizabeth off guard, didn't I? <laughs> okay, laughter is okay. <laughs> Jesus is all the world to me. My life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him I would fall. When I am sad, to him I go. No other one can cheer me so. 
When I am sad, he makes me glad. He's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me, and true to him I'll be. Following him, I know I'm right. He watches o'er me day and night. Following him by day and night. He's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me. I want no better friend. I trust. Leading days shall end. Beautiful life with such a friend. Beautiful life that has no end. Eternal life, eternal joy. He's my friend. Amen. So you may have noticed that we're up here kind of laughing why we. Um, sing. Uh, what was that you said this morning about Dean Martin? He's doing a nightclub with Dean Martin and Bing Crosby. <laughs> so the nightclub feeling of Dean Martin and Bing Crosby <laughs> is this morning's praise and worship moment. <laughs> right. Right. But you know what joy we have because we can trust in Jesus. I feel like I went right past a song, did I? Okay, well, we'll just do two today since I managed to skip a song. I don't know how I did that, but oh, well, it's okay, because guess what? It is sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise and to know the say the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him all and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood. And in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing blood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust me, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, will be meet to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him all and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Amen and amen. Now, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, and the third day he rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And Todd, as we move into our time of tithes and offering, would you handle the baskets this morning? And Cindy, I shall pass out to you. Let's pray. Oh, gracious God, you pour so many gifts upon us day in and day out. Uh, you give us um, so many things that we may not even recognize, but you continue to pour your blessings upon us. And so we thank you. We thank you for um, our day today. We thank you for the opportunity to gather. We thank you for the opportunity to give to you, for we know that all things that we have are yours and that you just uh, invite us in to participate in your kingdom here on earth. And so we ask that you bless these, our offerings, that they may uh, grow exponentially throughout our community, uh, making a change in your name. Amen. So Judy's heading off. Prayers for you at Morrow UMC. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about Asa. He's tucked in uh, the um, book of um, Corinth Chronicles, and he's kind of this king in the list of a lot of kings, and he has um, maybe two or three chapters that he gets to uh, be a part of that we get to hear about him in. So he's not a super well-known person, but this particular chapter um, is... Second Chronicles 15, and it's such a rich chapter of Chronicles. There's so much to it, um, so it really struck me, especially thinking about people that I know who just live their faith so strongly that you can't miss it in their coming and in their going. Uh, and I know we have people like that amongst us, and we have others more like me who are a little quieter and just try to do the best we can, but um, we are always touched, I think, by those folks who are willing to uh, just live out their faith in extraordinary ways, even when those extraordinary ways are very, very ordinary. Uh, so Asa was the third king of Judah. He was king for 41 years. Uh, Second Chronicles 15, I'm going to give you snippets and bits of it as we go. The Spirit of God came upon Sariah, son of Oded, and he went out to meet King Asa as he was returning from a battle. Listen to me, Asa, he shouted. Listen, all you people of Judah and Benjamin. The Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Whenever you seek him, you will find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. For a long time, Israel was without true God without a priest to teach them, and without the law to instruct them. But whenever they were in trouble and turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him out, they found him during those dark times. And so, does any of this sound familiar? It was not safe to travel. Problems troubled the people of every land. Nation fought against nation, and city against city. For God was troubling them with every kind of problem. But as for you, he said to Asa, be strong and courageous, for your work will be rewarded. When Asa heard the message from Asariah, he, uh, the prophet, he took courage, and he did a few things. He removed all the idols from the land of Judah and Benjamin and in the towns that he had captured. He repaired the altar of the Lord which stood in front of the entry room of the Lord's temple. Then Asa called together all the people of Judah and Benjamin, along with the people that, who had settled among him. For many from Israel had moved to Judah during Asa's reign when they saw that the Lord, his God, was with him. Asa grew the kingdom. 
because people saw the way he lived out his faith and they wanted to participate in that. Uh, and based on the scripture, I'm, I think maybe they wanted to feel that comfort in the shelter of God and be in a community that was God-oriented. And so they shouted out their oath of loyalty to the Lord with trumpets blaring and ram's horns sounding. All in Judah were happy about the covenant, for they had entered into it with all of their heart. They earnestly sought after God, and they found him. And the Lord gave them rest from their enemies on every side. They worshiped with a crazy, intense, powerful, passionate worship. They had a wholehearted commitment, the kind of joy that can only be found when we, when we have left all of our idols, all of our distractions, all of those things that we put in front of God behind. There is joy beyond joy beyond joy that takes the place, right, of all of those things that, um, as all of those idols that we put in front of us. They, uh, Asa removed and he repaired and he worshiped. He was devoted to the Lord. His faith informed everything he did through his reign. And the people of Judah were encouraged in their faith. They were prosperous and they enjoyed years of peace. Asa worked hard to bring Judah out of chaos and into the kingdom that reflects the kingdom of God. We too have authority and we have opportunity to bring the good news of the kingdom into our chaotic world. Our work begins with devotion to God. There is something about being fully grounded in our faith, like a tree whose roots are uh, deeply rooted in the ground and touching to the water that allows us to just bloom and grow and provide beauty and shelter and shade to the world around us. Uh, a friend of mine is building a house, and we drove by the other day to kind of take a look and see how things were coming along. Uh, it's a beautiful neighborhood, lots of homes around it, um, but this one space was mostly empty, and then when you kind of came around past the trees, you saw that the foundation was there, and they were going to have a full basement, so the foundation was like walls of bricks and a big rectangle, and within it, just this big empty space. And when I think about having this foundation in God, I think about uh, maybe having those strong um, walls of faith beneath me, but also that big empty space within, open for God to fill, right? Open for God to fill that space up. Um, and out of that, the building of the kingdom of God happens. So what is our authority and where does it come from? Asa was king, right? He sort of automatically had authority just because of where he was. But we all have a position in the world. And believe it or not, like it or not, we all have a bit of um, responsibility and a bit of um, position among the people, a bit of authority among the people that we interact with. It may be as brother or sister or child or mom or dad or coworker, but anytime we interact with anybody, we are in a position um, that matters in that relationship. And we are in a position of authority because there's no one else in the world like you. There's no one else that knows your story. There's no one else that has the relationship with God that's just specifically like you have. We are all in a place that who we are matters in the world that is around us. And um, there is no authority except that which has been established by God. So no matter what it is, no matter who we answer to, no matter what the government's doing, no matter what our teachers are up to, all those people that we look up to that are very important in our lives take second place, right? to God's authority over our lives, to God's authority over our community, to God's authority over our world. Now, sometimes that looks a little broken, as we've talked about earlier, and as this weekend has been so important to remember the folks that we were uh, lost and the folks that were affected um, in our country and all over the world because of the events of 9-11 and uh, other tragedies that continue to plague us. 
And sometimes the question becomes, well, why is God letting all of this happen, right? If he's sovereign over everything, then why do these things happen? But the will of God is, um, in some ways, a mystery to us. I've, uh, there's an author, his name is Leslie Weatherhead, and I love, I love his idea of what the will of God can look like. He says we sort of clump everything together under one umbrella of God's will. Well, we can think about God's will uh, in three different ways. We can think about his intentional will, uh, which we saw in creation. When he created the Garden of Eden and he plopped down Adam and Eve in there and he gave them everything they could possibly ever need. And this is his desire for our world, that we might be Eden, that we might be joyous, that we might be worshipful, crazy, crazy worshipful and always happy. But then, of course, things happen that kind of changed that plan because he gave us free will. And so there's his uh, conditional will, which is his working in and out of our lives to make the changes, um, to make adjustments. Uh, God is a moving God, never still, always involved. And then he talks, Leslie Weatherhead talks about his ultimate will, God's will that comes about regardless of all the circumstances that we have brought to bear, of all of our mistakes and stumblings, of all of the things that cause us difficulties, ultimately, ultimately, God brings it all around so that we are headed back toward the garden again. Or, I would put it, the kingdom of God. I would put it, you know, that God, we're in that kingdom right now, and we're also always moving toward that kingdom. There is a show <laughs> called uh, Call the Midwife. It's on, do you know that show? Yeah, it's a pretty popular show. It's on Netflix, and it's uh, the story of an area in East London called Poplar. It's set, what do you think, late 40s or early 50s? Right about the time women started wearing pants. That was about the second, episode, second season. So whenever that was, that's when it's set. And that area of London was very impoverished at the time. A lot of really hardworking people that were just scrambling to be able to have food and shelter and a lot, a lot of kids. And um, in that time, there was a um, kind of a central group of uh, nuns and midwives who were there providing medical care and also just a lot of love and compassion for the people in that community. And so um, every day the nuns, usually every show, the nuns would gather and you would uh, hear their worship and their devotional time and um, get to know these mid midwives, these young women who would uh, be on call 24 hours a day to go and uh, help women to birth their babies. So this one particular episode that really struck me as I was thinking about today's message was uh, Sister Evangelina, who was one of the nuns. And she was coming up on 30 years in her ministry. And so it was tradition to have this huge party, this huge jubilee for Sister Evangelina. But she wanted nothing whatsoever to do with it. And she kept trying to um, distract people and keep them from preparing for this party because she really just didn't want it. So much so that they had to sneak around and throw a surprise party for her instead. And it was so neat because she went out to the surprise party. They were all clapping, and they sat her down. And then um, one by one, all these young adults would come up and kids and hand her, like, flowers or a small gift, and they would say, it's because of you I'm here, you know, because she had been the midwife at their births. So over and over, thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. Um, but her authority wasn't from the position she had, from her knowledge of childbirth, uh, from the fact that she was a nun, a woman of, uh, who had committed herself completely um, and would have been seen like as an expert in things of the spirit, right? Her authority came from the fact that she was dedicated to God and to community. And community knew that. They knew they could rely on her. They knew they could go to her for what ailed them. And that gave her the authority, her dedication to God and to community. C.S. Lewis said, authority exercised with humility and obedience, accepted with delight, are the very lines along which our spirits live. 
when faith informs everything we do, uh, there's a natural outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us. This natural outpouring that reaches out into our relationships, into our church, into our community, bringing the kingdom of God with us. And it changes the world. So what does the kingdom of God look like to you? To Asa, I think you could boil it down to word and worship. He surrounded himself by people who would support him in his faith. And when you do that, you can sometimes discern more easily what the word of God is for your life. He was willing to listen. And when he did, he brought his people into worship. He removed things of other worship, and, and, he, and he repaired the temple of the Lord, and he uh, designed uh, not only uh, just like this quiet little worship like we Methodists do so well, but also just this huge, loud, um, heartfelt, full-on, meaningful worship, and he encouraged people to love God with their whole hearts. For the nuns, I think... Uh, maybe the kingdom of God to them look like building community out of poverty, being willing to step in to something totally different. Um, the, book, the whole series is based on memoirs of a young lady, starting with her kind of stepping out of her comfortable life into this sort of uncomfortable, unknown world and all the things that she encountered. I think that uh, for the nuns, it was about building community out of poverty. I think often... Most of us walking into church this morning online or thinking about maybe what our faith life might be, whether it's walking in the building or quiet prayer alone, uh, have this vision of something better, don't we? There's something in our hearts that know that this world is not the world that we belong in, that what happens in this world is temporary, that there's got to be more to life than what we experience day in and day out. I think we experience that on a personal level. And so the question is, what idols are in our life that need to be torn down to get out of that way of that vision of something better? What does courageous look like for us? What does courageous next steps look like? What can we celebrate? Because God is doing these wonderful things in our lives. And for a church, the same questions. What idols need to be torn down so that we might be more effective in our community, a more worshipful people? What does courageous look like for us as a church, as a whole? What are our next steps? And what is it that can, we can celebrate as we gather in this room at the feet of this cross, uh, worshiping together and singing and just spending our time together? What are those things that we can celebrate together? May all those things be so. And may we be a changed people through dedication to God and by the God who approaches us when we least expect it and reminds us to be strong and to be courageous. Let us pray. Lord Almighty Father, thank you so much for inviting us to be here, for reminding us of who you are, for reminding us that... Uh, when we give ourselves to you wholeheartedly, that you uh, do things with us that we could never imagine, that your reach through us is far more than we could ever know, that even though we sometimes feel unworthy, we know that we are broken and sometimes question our effectiveness in your kingdom, you know so much more than we do. You know the people that are on their way to us. And so we ask that you bless our interaction that you help us to remember that it's not about us, but it is all about you. And so we offer this day and all of our days into your care and to your guidance. As we uh, pray the prayer that the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks, everybody, for being here today. May you go out from here being blessed, filled with the Holy Spirit, 
to love and to serve the Lord. Amen.